What's going on guys, Billy here, and the Mavic 3 Enterprise is a much larger release than some people might think. On the outside, this drone looks very similar to the consumer version of the Mavic 3 with the same sensors, the same airframe design, the same controller, and while the camera might look the same, this is actually where the biggest difference between these drones lies. You see, inside of the camera is a brand new mechanical shutter, which makes this drone, the Mavic 3 Enterprise, the best mapping drone that you can buy right now on the market period. The consumer version of the Mavic 3 differs by using an electronic shutter, which turns the sensor on and off to take photos. This means that any motion in your frame is subject to distortion, which honestly is perfectly fine for an aerial platform as you're not often photographing fast moving subjects like you might be with a camera on the ground. A mechanical shutter on the other hand uses a moving shutter that opens to expose the entire sensor at once when taking a photo, eliminating the possibility of that motion distorting your photos. The reason that this is so important in a drone that you use for mapping is because while the drone is flying its route with the camera pointed down towards the ground, it's taking photos as it's moving, as it's flying. So therefore, if you have an electronic shutter, it could lead to potentially blurry or distorted photos. Now, the mechanical shutter is not the only thing that makes the Mavic 3 Enterprise such a great drone for mapping. The optional RTK module will give you a more accurate final product as opposed to just using the onboard GPS to mark where the photos were taken. The advertised flight time of 45 minutes means that you can fly for longer, resulting in the ability to complete larger scans more quickly. The foldable airframe means that the drone is more portable and easy to bring with you on a job site. DJI's transmission system, OcuSync 3, between the drone and remote offer a nice and stable connection for missions where you might be mapping a larger area. And probably the most important thing, this drone is now compatible with Drone Deploy, which is by far one of the most popular mission planning and processing platforms for 2D mapping and 3D modeling. To quickly clarify, Drone Deploy is a third-party app that's integrated with DJI's drones for years now, and thanks to DJI providing a mobile SDK with the Mavic 3 Enterprise, Drone Deploy and other applications in the future will be able to take advantage of this awesome platform. Just to give you a little bit of history, before the Mavic 3 Enterprise came onto the scene, the go-to mapping drone was DJI's Phantom 4 Pro, which had a mechanical shutter, was a much larger platform, and came out over six years ago. And this has also been discontinued by DJI, which means that now it's kind of hard to get batteries, parts, or even buying this drone outright, because again, DJI doesn't even make it or sell it. Now, DJI has, of course, released new drones since this date, but none with a mechanical shutter. The newer drones, like the DJI Mavic Air 2 and the Air 2S, have just recently become compatible with Drone Deploy. They're actually technically still in beta, but because of SDK and compatibility issues, the consumer version of the Mavic 3 is still not compatible with Drone Deploy, despite it sharing a similar airframe as the Mavic 3 Enterprise here. These compatibility issues really started to come up between DJI's drones and third-party applications that were meant to be used with DJI drones when DJI went and just totally switched their companion app from the Go application to the Fly application. So I think starting with the Mavic Air 2, they started pushing out this brand new application that changed the software development kit, meaning that all of these older applications couldn't integrate with DJI's newer drones unless there was some sort of workaround. Also, with this transition from the Go app to the Fly application, DJI left waypoints in the dust. All the older drones like the Mavic 2 Pro and Phantom 4 Pro could take advantage of this waypoints function that wasn't brought from the Go app to the Fly app and an application like Drone Deploy, which is very heavy on waypoints and autonomy, not being able to use waypoints was a big issue. Another thing to note is that with remotes that featured built-in screens like the smart controller and the R2 Pro becoming more popular, they made the flying experience so much better, but kind of cut out the ability to install third-party apps at least easily with the lack of the Google Play Store. Okay, so hopefully I've set the scene for you. The Mavic 3 Enterprise is a long time coming. I'm sure a lot of people will be happy to ditch their old clunky Phantom for something that's nice, new, shiny, and sleek, because again, this thing has been in service since 2016. But regardless, this has the makings to be the best mapping drone that we've seen from DJI because of its portability, the RTK module, the mechanical shutter, the flight time. I mean, really, it checks all the boxes. So with that said, let's head out and make our very first map with this drone using Drone Deploy here on the RC Pro Enterprise. It is getting cold here in Philadelphia, so we're gonna do this video here from my car. I don't think I could have chosen a better spot to do a test map here with the Mavic 3 Enterprise. Just to give you a lay of the land, I used to come here because there was a group of abandoned buildings, was super fun to fly FPV through, was super fun to just fly like my Mavic around and get shots of that big smokestack, and now everything is torn down. They've completely leveled all of those old abandoned buildings, so not only do we have like this nice new structure here that we can get a nice 3D model of, but we can also take some measurements of like some of the stuff 
stockpiles in the back there and we can get some more intricate models here of some of the smaller machinery on site all right so the plan for the rest of this video is to plan our mission here on the remote controller then we'll actually fly the mission using the mavic 3 enterprise and then we'll get back to the studio upload all of that data and then analyze the map and the model that's been made using this drone here now i do want to mention that this is currently in beta so if we encounter any issues along the way i'm kind of just going to write it off and say drone deploy is going to work on this drone deploy is going to fix it in the future again this is like our very first look our very first attempt at making a map here with the new mavic 3 enterprise also i love being able to use the rc pro enterprise here being able to have this built-in screen not needing like a tablet or a phone i do want to mention that if you are going to be creating maps and actually planning your mission while on the go you want to make sure that you have some sort of internet connection so i'm just using like my hotspot here on my phone to connect to the rc pro so that i am able to of course get that internet connection so just make sure you have some sort of connection while on the go when actually using drone deploy it's just going to give you the best overall experience okay so let's jump on in to drone deploy here we'll create our brand new project new project we are out here in Embryville Pennsylvania so we'll go ahead type in Embryville create project let's try to find exactly where we're at we're right here kind of in these in these fields we're back in the woods so things might not load all that fast so as you can see right here i mean this old map actually shows like the buildings that used to be back there so that's why drone maps are like so powerful because it gives you up-to-date information okay so we'll create our brand new project here we'll name it emberville i guess that that works continue also i want to mention i don't have the rtk module here for the mavic 3 enterprise i would love to get that in the future to actually make these apps or make these maps more accurate but again just kind of a mention oops it crashed <laughs> app crashed but yeah just to mention like i don't have the rtk module available for the mavic 3 enterprise i don't actually like own it yet oh boy Okay, so we had a little bit of a hiccup there, but remember, we're still running a beta application here. So we're going to have to kind of work through these kinks as we encounter them. And hopefully Drone Deploy can watch this and implement those fixes into the final build of this application. So we're back here in Drone Deploy. Let's go ahead and actually create our map here. Um, so we're right here. And I think what I want to do is make sure I capture all of the parking lot here on the side. I want to go a little bit into, if I can grab it, a little bit into the trees back there. A little bit past the trees back here and then finally i want to make sure we capture this area in the front what's really nice is that usually when i'm making maps say with like the phantom 4 pro or maybe like a smaller drone like the mavic 2 pro or the air 2s you notice that like you sometimes cut corners because of how much flight time is available on the drone so like for example maybe i would increase the altitude to make sure i could do a job on one battery or maybe i would shrink the size of the map to make sure that i could get that whole entire job done in one battery but now with the mavic 3 enterprise these maps are going to turn out so much better not only because the camera is better but also because we can fly for longer like i'm looking right now and the estimated flight time on this is 16 minutes i mean that's like one third the flight time available here on this drone so what i'm going to do is actually decrease my flight altitude i want to go to about 150 feet i also want to scroll down to advanced turn off the automatic settings we're going to switch this up a little bit i'm going to turn off perimeter 3d and turn on my crosshatch 3d which now is going to bring us to a total of 42 minutes 773 images i'm not sure if i'm going to be able to get this all done on one single battery but it's going to be very close because remember we get about 47 minutes of flight time here on the mavic 3 enterprise also my drone's been sitting out there so i don't think i have full power but we're ready to go let's head outside and get this drone in the air all right, so here we go. The inaugural flight with the Mavic 3 Enterprise running drone deploy. Start flight, pre-flight checks, start flight, initializing. There it goes. <laughs> Being able to finally use the Mavic 3 with drone deploy and make maps is gonna be awesome. All right, so I don't think I'm going to be able to get this entire job done in one single flight or this entire map done in one single flight because I messed around a lot talking to the camera. I had it sitting out there on the ground for a little bit, so it wasted some battery just kind of sitting there idling. I ended up taking off with about 85%. If you look right now, it says that our flight plan is estimated to take about 48 minutes. We've got a lot of area to capture here, so I'll be back with you shortly to check in on how this thing is doing. 
All right, so just quickly checking in here, the drone is just finishing up the first section of the cross hatch. So basically, it just finished flying in one direction. It's now gonna flip around and fly the opposite direction to get some different photos to create that high resolution 3D model. Right now, we have 28% remaining in our battery. Usually, the drone likes to return home between like 25 to 27%. So really, at any time, this drone should be coming back to us and we'll swap a new battery in here. Up until this point, I've experienced no issues whatsoever. Ever. The camera quality, if we kind of blow that up down here, looks great f coming from this camera. Um, also, the transmission has been flawless. There's been no disconnects. There's been no bugs whatsoever. So I'm crossing my fingers that the rest of this flight is going to go as smooth as this first half has. So once we swap the battery in, we'll finish up the automated flight, and then I'll get back with you guys when we actually go and do the manual flight and kind of do some orbits on our own. All right, so just finished up the automated mission from Drone Deploy. It took about one and a half batteries to complete this entire area, cross hatch and all. Did a really good job. I've got it sitting on the ground now. We're going to take off with what battery we have remaining, about 30%, and take some photos on our own. Now, the reason we're doing this is to get a lower elevation to show some of the different features of the buildings in specific areas. Now, the way that I'm going to do this is with the timed shot. So I'm going to have the drone automatically take photos every two seconds. So all I need to do is press the shutter button and now every two seconds the drone is going to be taking images and I can just kind of orbit and rotate around I'm gonna obviously fly above these trees and not hit them <laughs> but yeah so this is pretty much how we're gonna go and capture the rest of our images and what I think I'm gonna do is upload two different maps so I'll first upload just the photos captured on the automated mission and then after that I'll upload some photos taken where I actually hear and flying around manually. So let me go figure out this. Let me go worry about the drone flying. I'll be back with you when we get to the studio. All right, so as if I didn't already love this drone enough for mapping because of its feature set from the flight time to the size and portability to the ability to use the RC Pro, the image quality from that camera and the overall stitched map here in Drone Deploy looks beautiful. All thanks to that new sensor inside of the Mavic 3 Enterprise, the mechanical shutter, everything coming together to make this beautiful image. And of course, Drone Deploy's stitching. So right now we are within the Drone Deploy software. I uploaded all of the images. It looks like we have a total of 920 22 images, which was a fairly large file size. Let's see, my drone deploy folder here is about 13 gigs. So while the upload did take longer and the processing took a little bit longer as well because of those larger file sizes, it was all worth it because this map looks beautiful. I've been doing a little bit of playing around and looking here on my own. And while I will kind of walk through a couple of things here, I think the best way to enjoy this is for you to click on the link in the description to the view only um, view, the view only section of this map. So you can open it up on your computer and take a look for yourself. I'm also going to export it as a high quality JPEG and include that as a download in the description through Dropbox. So you can go ahead and check that out for yourselves to see all of the quality here in this image. Because while I can show you some things, you can't fully appreciate it if you just don't play around with it for yourself. So this is, of course, the building that we had here. Everything looks stitched together nicely from all of the images. We, of course, have all of the machinery that was very like uh, intricate. It had a lot of finite details and everything looks really good, especially in this pile of all this like scrap metal here everything looks very nice up here we mentioned that there were some stockpiles they were right here right and remember we can toggle on the elevation view from here get a look at kind of the edges of those stockpiles go over to our volume view and then take a volume measurement of these stockpiles and this again is something i'm really looking forward to being able to do with the mavic 3 enterprise because the mechanical shutter is going to give me much better imagery um than say using one that didn't have a mechanical shutter. But also that flight time is gonna let me go and actually scan larger sites all with one battery. So right now in this or in this uh, pile here, we've got 342 cubic yards of material. It's that easy. Just fly the drone, make a quick map, make a quick measurement, and you've got the amount of material here, material here inside of this pile. Now, what about the 3D model? I know that's what everybody wants to see. So we'll toggle to the 3D model section. In the top right corner, we're also gonna toggle from standard definition to high definition. And look, with this new update in Drone Deploy, this is not only for the Mavic 3 Enterprise, but with any drone that you use, you now can toggle the elevation view on the 3D model, which looks awesome. And I would say that the general, uh, I guess, fidelity of the 3D model looks good. But when we zoom in a little bit closer, remember, we took some extra photos manually doing some orbits around uh, some of these buildings. And I would say that it actually made a huge difference. So if we go here, this was the map or this was the model that was generated automatically. So this was all of the drone just flying all on its own. And then if we flip over to the next tab here, 
this is what we got when we actually were flying manually and captured some more images it looks way better now there are a couple of areas i noticed that do need a little bit of work i mean this is kind of tough down here but the fence is kind of like not showing up but again the fence is kind of difficult there are also some areas underneath of like the overhangs here let's see underneath of the overhangs here that got a little bit messed up but honestly i was a little bit in a rush because i had such little battery left on my drone so in the future if i was really dedicating time to making a 3d model of this facility here i'd spend a lot more time capturing much more photographs like upwards of 2,000 photographs just to get a nice 3d model here but again this is a really good understanding of like some preliminary aspects of what this map looks like let's see we can zoom down in on this truck too the truck looks really good all the equipment in the yard looks really good i know that we did some focusing let's see i gotta get my controls down here we did some focusing on this equipment over here as well and look at the imagery i mean look it even can capture in between these two machines which is pretty impressive and it also captures some of the definition here in the different materials laying on the ground so overall guys i am super pumped about using the mavic 3 enterprise for mapping here with drone deploy this again was just a small taste of being able to use it this was like the first run so i cannot wait to see what happens once drone deploy comes out of beta for the mavic 3 enterprise and it is fully supported anyway guys let me know your thoughts on drone deploy down in the comment section below and as always i'll talk to you later peace